I'm Michael Hoff with Digital Theologian. Welcome to day 21 of 40 Days with Jesus. Today we're in John 11 and Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. John chapter 11 is a pivotal point in the Gospel of John. So what we've seen with Jesus previously is him overturning and superseding institutions and festivals of Judaism. He has come and he has clearly said that he is the fulfillment of Jewish worship. Everything that is sacred to the Jewish people, Jesus is now saying, I am the fulfillment of that. He has been doing it for the first 10 chapters of the Gospel of John, and he started his ministry where John the Baptist was baptizing, and in chapter 10, he ended it in the same place. And the testimony that John the Baptist had given in the beginning was proved true in the end of chapter 10 by the people who had heard about Jesus. They affirmed the fact that John had given a true testimony about who Jesus was. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And now the story shifts, and it's a few months later, and Jesus is again ministering, and we're told that his friend, someone that he cares about, named Lazarus, in the town of Bethany, which is just about two miles away from Jerusalem, a good 30-minute walk from the temple, this site where Jesus now knows his friend is sick becomes a place of great contention. As we read John chapter 11, we need to keep in mind that Jesus' life was threatened several times in Jerusalem, and the last time they picked up stones to kill him as he made his way out of town. For Jesus to go to Bethany is a major risk, and you see that threaded through the comments that the disciples make. Right, The disciples are concerned about Jesus' safety as he makes a return basically back to Jerusalem. I mean, if you're getting two miles away and it's a 30-minute walk from the temple, there's a good chance that the guards, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, anyone who wants to take Jesus' life, if they have any kind of motivation at all, they can walk half an hour to make sure that he gets killed. But Jesus still makes the trip, but he delays. It's an interesting fact that if you do the timing from when Mary and Martha send the message to Jesus about Lazarus being sick and the time that it takes Jesus to get back, it looks like Lazarus probably died the same day that they sent a message to Jesus. And so when Jesus is making this statement about Lazarus sleeping, likely he is already dead when Jesus makes that statement. It's interesting that Jesus waits four days because in Jewish tradition at this time, it was common for people to believe that the the spirit hovered around the body for approximately three days. And so anything under three days could have been viewed in some ways as a resuscitation. Resurrection was a little bit easier in the first three days than any time after that. So what Jesus is doing in waiting four days and then calling Lazarus to life is a clear demonstration that he is doing something that only God could do. Anybody may be able to resuscitate the dead, but if somebody's been dead for three days and then the family locks the tomb and the family is concerned about how they might smell, then you know that it is a real resurrection. There are a number of amazing personal touches throughout this narrative. Jesus is said to love multiple times. He's concerned for Lazarus, he's concerned for Mary, he's concerned for Martha, he knows them. This is a place where Jesus has spent a lot of time over the years of his ministry, traveling from Jerusalem back to Galilee. Their house is on the road, it's on the way, and Jesus could have likely stopped there several times. And it's really fascinating that this is the place where Jesus most likely spent the final week of his life. But we'll get to that a little bit later. So we know that Jesus knew this family well, that he cared about them, and so it's not out of any callous nature that Jesus waits. It's interesting to me that Jesus doesn't weep when we get news that Lazarus has died. He doesn't just break down then, overcome by emotion at the loss of a friend. Jesus has already said where this is leading. This is leading to God being glorified, and Jesus knows who he is. This is the passage where he says, I am, ego, 
a me. I am, emphatically, I am, invoking the divine name, I am the resurrection and the life. And those that believe in me will not perish. Jesus affirms his power over death in the middle of this narrative. This is the time when Jesus, full of the power of the Holy Spirit, full of his divine might, full of an awareness of his identity as the resurrection and the life, comes to a confrontation with his true enemy, death itself. And he is not angry at Mary. He is not angry at Martha. There is some frustration about them not fully understanding who he is. They may believe in him. They may affirm that in the resurrection, in the end, in a future day. They have hope for the future, but they don't have hope for the moment. Jesus arrests their attention in the middle of all of this. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. This is not for a distant time. This is not for a far off place. Jesus declares in the face of death, in the face of fear, in the face of uncertainty, I am the resurrection and the life. That has not changed. Jesus is still the resurrection and the life. In his conversations with Mary and Martha, Jesus affirms his identity, his care for them, his concern for them, for Lazarus, and he comes to the tomb. And in the midst of great wailing and weeping, which would have been culturally appropriate and normal for that time, honestly, they even pulled in people with flutes and musical instruments to help the mourners weep and grieve. So there is a commotion surrounding the tomb of Lazarus. The Jews that are here in Bethany have come from Jerusalem out to Bethany because they hold Lazarus in high regard. And now we know that Jesus is having a public confrontation yet again with the people who would want to see him killed. There are likely those who have been a part of the mobs that want to stone him in the past here at the tomb of Lazarus. When Jesus calls for Lazarus to come out, he doesn't just say, hey, 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 Lazarus, buddy, can you come on out? Hey, Lazarus, Psst, I know, hey, Lazarus, come, come on. Come on. This is Jesus, full of righteous indignation as the resurrection and the life, coming to confront his enemy death in the face of the people who want to kill him. And so as he's there with the wailing, the mourning, the instruments playing a dirge, in the midst of that environment, Jesus raises his voice in the same way that the crowds raise their voice on the day that Jesus rides into Jerusalem, in the same way that the crowds raise their voice saying, crucify him, crucify him, as they cry out for the death of Jesus. It's that level of raising his voice that Jesus does in this moment. It is a guttural, visceral sound that Jesus releases as he says, Lazarus, come out. Jesus declares resurrection in the face of death. And he calls a friend to come out of the grave. And it rises up on the inside of him. And it is the true life of God overwhelming and overcoming death. Even death that is four days gone and might be rotten. In the midst of that, God speaks life. So no matter where we're at today, we can hold on to Jesus who is the resurrection and the life. It is this passage in John 11 where Jesus truly begins to put his life on the line for a friend. Jesus is laying down his life for Lazarus before he ever goes to the cross. Jesus has taken the risk of knowing that the Jews from Jerusalem could be there at Bethany and knowing that his life could be forfeit as a result of going to raise Lazarus from the dead, Jesus has chosen to come anyway. And so here we see Jesus honor Mary and Martha and Lazarus by risking his life to raise Lazarus from the dead to the glory of God. May we be those who lay down our lives for our friends. May we be those who embrace Jesus as the resurrection and the life, and as a result, have hope for today, no matter what is going on. 
So I pray for you, where you're at, that you would experience the resurrection and the life of Jesus, that the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit would stir to life all of the good things that are on the inside of you, and may death and fear and worry die at the feet of the one who is the resurrection and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day, and don't lose hope.